Hey YouTube, welcome to the joy of living. How's everybody doing? This will be my first video of an eight part series video on how to make my moon snares. Okay. Um, I hope you get something out of this. I hope you enjoy it. So on my first video, the topic we're going to discuss is how to make the cage. Check this out. So this is what we're talking about. Again, if you watch my introductory video, this is my uh, brownie cage. This is my granola cage. This is my Twinkie cage. So the first video we're going to learn is how to make the cage. These things are called mesh. And let me tell you, these mesh you can buy at Home Depot, Lowe's, or online. Let me show you what I have. This is my roll of mesh right here. Big roll, right? When it comes to mesh, here's what you need to know. One, they go by gauge. G-A-U-G-E. That's how they determine the thickness of the mesh. This is called mesh. The gauge determines the thickness of the mesh. And when it comes to the gauge, you don't want to use anything other than a 16 gauge. Here's the reason why. I tested out 6, 17 gauge, 18, 19. 17, 18, 19, 20 gauges is what you're going to find at Home Depot, Lowe's, and those department stores. Those are the only size that they mostly carry. Now, you may get lucked out and find a 16 gauge mesh. However... You won't find it in a half inch by half inch. So here's what I mean by half inch by half inch. This hole right here is a half inch long and a half inch wide. So that is a half inch by half inch. Now, if you find a 16 gauge mesh at a home hardware supply uh, like Home Depot or Lowe's, they're not going to be half inch by half inch. You may look out and find a one inch by half inch. The size is a little bit bigger than the mesh I have at half inch by half inch. You will find the one inch by half inch 16 gauge at the hardware store before you find my size mesh. Now, when it comes to this, it's steel, okay? Now, some people buy stainless steel because, you know, they're not corrosive. However, stainless steel is roughly about maybe five times more than the original price of a regular uh, steel uh, mesh, okay? So, if you want to go out and get you a stainless steel one, you're more than welcome to. Um, they do work a little bit better, but it's going to cost you a whole lot more. Now, a half inch by half inch is a lot more expensive than your standard best option of one inch by half inch. This half inch by half inch is a little bit more expensive. However, they work a lot better. I imagine this is a crab, uh, a crab claw. If they try to dig in to get the bait, their claw is going to get stuck. And let me tell you, um, I pulled in, I say roughly about maybe 10% of my crabs from them hanging on to the gauge and not being able to let their claw go because they get stuck in it. Not necessarily based on the loop. So here's what I mean by it. When I catch a crab, a lot of times they're digging in and they get stuck here. Not necessarily on the loop. So they get stuck in there and then I pull them up. So that's why I like the half inch by half inch a lot better. So first we're talking about mesh. Okay, we're talking about mesh, um, uh, mesh. And then the gauge, 16 gauge, 17 gauge, 18, 19, they're too thin, way too thin. Uh, a mesh is way too small. And what it's going to do, the crab, because the claw is so strong, they're going to break it. Okay, they're going to bend it, break it. It's no good at all. And it's not going to last you too long. Um, and any uh, gauge, 15, 14, they're way too thick and you, it's hard to bend them. Now, if you have the tools and the time to bend those, I'll use a 15 gauge, 14 gauge, no problem. But one, they're a little bit more expensive. Two, it's harder to bend. So my recommendation when it comes to mesh, find you a 16 gauge. Most of our gauge are galvanized. What it is, it's a coating uh, on the outside. Now, it's still going to get rusted, okay? Because we're talking about salt water. So it is going to get rusted. Stainless steel, they won't get rusted, but again, it's five times more. My mesh, what I got and what I found online, and it took a lot of research. I called different companies. I did about a week of research trying to find around. This was the best for me. And I bought this for 150 bucks. I suggest you look online. You probably get better options online if you do some research. This, I got it through Amazon. I think the last time I checked, they no longer sell it. But maybe they're out of stock. Let me see if I can go online to my Amazon account and give you some more information so that way you can take a look. This is why I love this mesh. 
One is because it is half inch by half inch. It's 16 gauge. It's galvanized before it is coated in vinyl. This roll, it is four feet by 50 feet. So four feet high by 50 feet long. Now I made about a thousand snares already. And let me tell you, I barely put a dent in it. I barely put a dent. I could probably make about 10,000, 20,000 snares with this roll for 150 bucks. A lot of the snares and a lot of the mesh you see, they're metal and they're steel. They're galvanized, okay? So you see the metal part. This, you see it in black because it is coated. The galvanized steel is coated in vinyl. For me wise, this will make sure that the salt water does not break into it and corrode the metal too quickly. <laughs> Unless you are willing to invest in it in the long term, you know, you don't have to go out and buy a big old roll like this. They sell it at hardware store uh, by sheets and by uh, smaller rolls. So you can definitely get it on a smaller scale. However, Home Depot, Lowe's, hardware stores like that. You're not going to find a half inch by half inch that is 16 gauge or less. It's hard to find. You might get lucky and find a 16 gauge that is one inch by half inch. So that's what you may, may not find. But this is what you want. So this is my mesh. When it comes to my mesh to make my cage, that's what I use. I use the 16 gauge, half inch by half inch. It's galvanized, but it's also vinyl coated for extra protection. When it comes to the shape, I I narrowed down to the shape. I tried every single shape. Let me tell you, I tried the pyramid. Um, I tried the leaning tower. Um, I tried big ones, small ones. Um, I tried different uh, shapes, different ways to do it. I narrowed down to these three shapes that I like the most, which is the brownie, the granola, and the Twinkie cage. I mean, I tried big ones, okay? I tried things like that. I, I tried, let me tell you. I went to the dollar store and like, look, see, that's where my idea for the leaning tower came from. Uh, I bought this, but I didn't use it because it's not the best. But then I got the mesh and then I created this shape. Um, and that's how I got started with my leaning tower. Um, I used something like, you know, uh, had ideas come from this, you know. And so I used to, uh, I tried a different bunch of different uh, shapes to do my snares. And let me tell you, <sighs> one, they don't cast out too far. Okay, two, it's hard to put lead on them for them to stay down. Three, they're not the most effective. So when it comes to shape and size, this is what I use and this is what I recommend. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make the cage, okay? Um, and these cage, I'm going to show you how to make the Twinkie, the Brownie, and the uh, Granola cage. Um, and to show you, but for the rest of the videos throughout, I'm going to focus on how to make these snares mainly on the Twinkie cage only. But I'm going to show you how to make these cage. Come take a look. The first thing you're going to learn is how to cut your mesh. Um, I use, what are these called? Dykes? Pliers? Uh, to cut the mesh pretty good. Alright, grab you one of these and this is how you cut it. Now, I'm going to show you two. First, I'm going to show you how to cut uh, the cage according to how I do mine, okay? Um, and then the second one, I'm going to show you another version of how to cut the cage and how to crimp them together and how to make sure your cage stays together. So it's a couple step process. Right? So with this, I have 10 by six inch. What I'm gonna do is cut off the end. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off right here. So one, two, cut that off right there. One, two, and do that again. So you have that. So that right there, you cut it off one, two, three, four, like a corner section. And you're gonna do the same thing to every other one. So you're gonna cut two of them, two up, two over. Let's take a look at it again. One, Two, I'm gonna cut there. Two, and then cut two more. Cut off the corner. Do the same thing on the other side. When you're done, you have something that looks like this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut as close to the edge as possible so these spikes are not sticking out and poking. So you wanna get as close as possible. You see how it sticks out a little bit? Uh, all I want to do is cut as close as possible and try to trim those down. And I'm going to do that all the way around. After I trim all the edges of all the excess, and try to get them uh, to as close as possible, um, I end up having something like this. Mm -hmm. So your 10 down ended up being 
one, two, three, four, five, six, six here, ten here, six here. Okay? So that's your first start. Now, that's my version. Let me show you another common version, okay? And here's a slight difference. You're gonna cut the same. However, you're gonna actually leave these ends, and I'm gonna show you why. So going back to again, we're gonna go cut into two, right? Uh, two in. So one, two. But instead of cutting here, okay, where I do mine, I'm gonna cut mine on here to leave the ends. And this one, I want the ends to lay out. So I'm gonna cut. That's the difference. You see that? So I want these to lay out. So here's mine with no ends. And here are these with the ends. And I'm gonna tell you why we're keeping those ends later. So let's do the same thing to all those four corners. Uh, for this one, we're only gonna cut the ends on this side, this side, and this. The inside ends are going to stay where they are. We're not going to cut those off. Alright, so after you trim the edges, this is what it looks like. Again, we cut the extra parts on the outside only. Okay? But the inside we're not going to cut those. We're going to leave those alone. Okay, and I'm going to show you how, why. Show you why. So here's the difference between mine and the most common one, and the, probably the most easiest one for everybody else. And I'm going to show you the difference. So first, you want to cut those out. Next, we're going to talk about folding them. So again, this one is mine, where everything's trimmed off. And this is the other sample where the edges are kept on. So when I come to fold mine, um, again, you can use other tools. There are other tools that help you bend it. Metal um, uh, tools that help you bend and you could put crevice in there and just bend. I, I, I don't have those. So I use pretty much my hand. So where it is, is here is where I want to bend it to come up to have my, one of my sides. So I just bend it a little bit. And this is another reason why we use 16 gauge. Uh, Again, 17 and up, too thin. 15 and below, too hard to bend. And quite honestly, if I do go with another size, I'll probably go 15 and 14 if I had a tool to bend it, but that's it. With this, 16 gauge, it's pretty heavy duty and it's still able to bend, things like that. So I'm gonna bend up one side, turn around, bend it up the other side, make sure it's even out. Again, one, two, I'm gonna bend that again. And then I'm going to bend it again. So you have like a little Twinkie box. Okay, That's my version of it. Right. Now, let's do the same thing on the other one. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to bend. One side. Another side. Bend the other side up. And bend the other side up with it. Okay, so with this, um, actually, you know what? I missed a step. Cut out the edge. You're going to cut out these edges right here. You actually don't need them. It's been a while since I've done this version. This is one of my first versions that I did. I don't do this version anymore. I found a better way, and I like my other way better, so I don't actually don't do this version anymore. But for you guys out there, you don't need the extra tools, or you don't want the extra tools, um, this is the best way to do it. First, it looks like that. You bend your size, you have your edge, right, on each side. Don't cut those off. Trim everything else. So this, you're going to fold it up and fold it up. So you got your Twinkie box, okay? You see that? Twinkie box. Now, if you want to be a little bit more creative, you can push this in a little bit and try to get to attach, and I'll give you a different shape. You see how it curves in a little bit? I'll give you a different shape. Me, um, I like it straight, okay? Twinkie. You have two version here. This is the Twinkie cage version. Okay? So you have one mine. All the edges are trimmed. This one, you leave the edges untrimmed at the end. Here, these two. And I'm going to show you out why later.
Now you have your cage, okay? And you need to go ahead and close them up to make sure they're one solid piece. So we're gonna start off with my version. The reason why I don't leave the edge uh, at the end, like this one, where I leave it at the end, because later down the line, I found this, I did some research, and I used this originally to put on my top, which I, uh, to the top of the cage, which I'm gonna show you later. But down the line, when I did more experiment, um, I come to find out that these were so much easier and uh, allowed me to do it so much faster, um, and it's actually more effective in the long run when it comes to stability, um, to put use these to hold my cage together. Now, the only difference with this is, well, it's an extra tool, you have to buy another tool. They build rabbit cages, they need to keep the rabbit cage interlocked, so they use this, but you need the tool for it as well. So again, this is an additional tool that you, if you don't wanna buy, you wanna do this version. But if you don't mind buying these extra tools, you can do this. Now this, a pound of these, is probably about five bucks, and I could probably make about a hundred snares with just a pound of these, okay? Very cheap. So what this does is you put you put it in there like that. It's a little bright, see that? So you put the curved part on the single and not the double. And then what I do is I'll go in into the top part, stick it in, and I just crimp it together. And when I crimp it, boom, it holds my cage. All right, quick, simple, and it lasts so much longer. Let's do that again. Let's do that three more times. So again, when I first did the snares, I used this version. Um, down the line, I did some research. I got these to do the tops, and these work so much better, and they're so much quicker for me to uh, produce them. And again, all this is a hobby. The learning process was the funnest part for me, and finding things to make it quicker and better, that was the best thing, that was the best part for me. So this is what that looks like here and do the last part. And you see, when there's two section, the bottom and the top, I do the top. You don't wanna do the bottom. Do the top and boom, it should hold it. See that? Okay, and hold tight, boom. They go to the start of my Twinkie cage. Now, let's put this to the side. This one right here, when I first did it, this is what I did. The reason why we keep the ends is because these ends replace my clip. So all you do is bend them in and bend them all the way around. See that? Get it inside. See right there. And then take it, close it up. Let's try it again. You see that end? end piece, you're crimping it in, around, to secure to the cage. So that's the way it looks. You see how it's just bent around? Let's see if I can focus this real quick. Let's see if I can get this into focus here. So see that? It bends around, all the way around. And it holds your cage together. Same thing with the bottom one. So you're gonna do the same thing to all four sides. So now that you have all corners bent in, you wanna go inside to make sure you tighten it up so there's no loose. So you go to each one of those that you did, make sure you press it and tighten it up so it doesn't loosen up. And let me tell you, these crabs, their claws is pretty strong. Like for them to break through a 16 gauge mesh, <laughs> their claws is powerful. So go in, make sure you crimp them down, make sure they're tight, locked in. And when they're tight, locked in, they all should look something like that. See that? That's how you lock them in. Now, can you continue twisting all the way around? Like can I take this right here and then continue twisting it all the way around? Sure, I can, but there's no really no need to. What I was saying is like, if I twist it, continue twisting it, continue twisting it, come out here, 
a little bit, see how it came out, and then continue twisting it in and move like that. Yeah, sure, I can. There's really no need. So that's the other one. Now, you saw the difference. So this one, to me, is stronger, it's sturdier, and it's a whole lot quicker compared to this one. But they both work. So those are the two versions of the K. Now, whatever you choose to do, that's up to you. So next, let's go ahead and try to put on the top, the lid to these. So remember, this is my uh, my updated version. Um, and for my updated version, because it's two, four, six across, I'm gonna go ahead and do six across and two in order to fit right on top, just like that. So with this, we first we're gonna do my version. So my version, you wanna cut and trim as close as you can all the way through to make sure that you, know, you try to get as close as possible. Now, what I meant earlier by I can make it prettier, but it's gonna take me a lot more time. Like, I could grind these down and sand them and smooth them out all the way around. Right now, they're a little bit rough, you know, but they're very close. You see that? Well, I could spend a couple minutes trying to grind them down, but again, that's just more time. And the snare itself right now, is it's already taken me about 30 minutes, um, 30 to 40 minutes to make one snare, and that's the quickest time. So that right there is already a lot of time to make one snare. So if I was to do these extra little parts along the way, it would take me about three hours just to complete a snare to make it look pretty. Quite honestly, let me tell you, we lose snares like crazy, and to spend that much time and money on a snare is something that you can lose. For me, it's just not worth it. For my version, again, two by six, and same thing, I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on, and the lid's going to go right on top. Um, I take a, a clip, go ahead and put my clip on. The curve goes on the single hand, uh, single side, and the other end on the double side. And make sure your clip is center. And what I mean by center is, let's see if I can give you a view here. See how it's dead in the center? So make sure it's aligned in the center. All I'm gonna do, see how I lined it up with the top, the top of the uh, lid and the top of the cage. I'm gonna go ahead and just stick my clip in on top. See if it do it sideways. And then I'm gonna crimp it in. Uh, can you see here? Okay, there you go. Maybe that, I think that's the best view I can get. I take the clip and I, I put it in, okay? And I just crimp it up. So it holds on just like that. See that? So I'm gonna do another one on the other side. Okay, make sure it's centered or as center as best as you can. And then same thing to the other side. Make sure it's lined up. The J part, I'm gonna stick that on top and I'm gonna stick it in. And then I'm gonna crimp it. Okay, so now you have two. And this is how you get your lid. Boom. See that? That's your lid right there. So that's my version, okay? And this is what the clips was meant for. Um, this is what it was supposed to do. But then along the way, as I was experimenting, I was like, hey, you know what? I could use the clips to clip on my cage and hold my cage together too. Works out well for me. So I like this, it's really sturdy. And when you put all this together, with, it's like it's really strong, really strong. You know how easily we bend it earlier? Now that you have it all as one piece, it's come really, really strong. Now, I could spend more time and try to uh, sand this down and smooth it out a little bit. It's not bad, it's not gonna get in the way of anything. Now, if you can get it centered and somehow it to one side a little bit, all you have to do is get some pliers and push it over and you line it up again. And that's it, look, works so well, so well. Let me show you the first version that I ever done. Now, when it came to this one right here, right, with the clips, it's still two by six, but I leave the ends, two of the ends. I don't need the middle one. So two ends like that. And this is what's going to help me crimp and hold on to the uh, cage. Again, put it on. And it doesn't matter what side you do, really, quite honestly. So there. And you see how it's out like that. So all I'm going to do, just like my cage, I'm going to bend it. 
and wrap it around the cage so it stays there. Let's go ahead and crimp this up. Twist it all the way around so it doesn't fall off. And let me tell you, these crabs, another reason why I don't like this because these crabs are pretty strong and after a while, they will break open. So you have to do it again and you put on another lid. Whereas the clips, they'll hold it there forever. You pretty much, now you have your lid. Now, you saw how quicker it is on the other one when I did with the clip over here. And this, it's a lot stronger and sturdier than this hinge. This will hold it, but let me tell you, after a while, you're gonna have to put you on another lid. So, that's one way. That's another way. This, I like this one better. This is how you make a cage. So, this is my Twinkie cage. I'm gonna go ahead and do the granola and the brownie cage for you so you can take a look. But moving forward, when I do the rest of the snare, I'm not gonna use the other um, cages as a sample until further down the line. So further down the line, when I put an additional seven videos out on every single snare style that I do, then you'll see uh, the different styles for the different cages and so forth. But for this tutorial and for the next eight videos, um, it's gonna be based on this Twinkie cage, okay? First, go ahead, make your cage. So next we're gonna do the brownie cage. It's that little square ca uh, cage that I showed you earlier. So for my brownie cage, I'm gonna cut it by two, four, six, eight, by seven. Two, four, six, seven. First, we're gonna do my version, the version with the clips. Eight by seven, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut the four corners off so I could uh, fold them. So one, two, one, two, and then I cut out a little square on each corner, just like that. I'm gonna do the same for the other four corners. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim all the sides to get it to smooth out and without having any excess parts on it as much as I can. So go ahead and do all the sides like that. So when you trim all the sides, try to smooth it out as best as you can, you should end up with something like this. That's my version, okay? Let's do the other version. Just same thing. You're gonna cut off the four corners, but you're gonna leave a little bit of excess. You wanna go ahead and cut. Again, these ends right here, you want to keep because that's what's going to hold your cage together. Everything else, the excess, you want to cut off. When you're done, this is how it should look. These points right here are still out. So are these, these, and these. That's what's going to hold your cage together. Everywhere else is trimmed to as smooth as possible. Now, when you're done, you have two products. Okay, my version and this version. Okay, so first we're gonna fold the brownie cage according to my version. Um, again, same thing. I'll go ahead and fold the sides up. Boom. All right, let's do the other one. And when you fold this version, you see how it sticks out? 
you want it to stick out so that way you can crimp it at the end to hold the gauge, uh, cage together. So I'll fold it up. Boom, there you go. All right, so you see how at the ends they'll stick out. So now let's go ahead and crimp the cage and get into one solid piece. We're gonna start with my version. So with this, you get eight clips, center it. Remember, curve part of the clip goes on the single head side. The flat part go on the double head side. Center it as best as you can. And then with this, same thing, I'm gonna do it the top one only. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick the J part in. See how it sticks in like that? Okay, so I'm gonna stick it in. And I'm just gonna crimp it. And it's gonna come together. Boom, just like that. I'm gonna do four more sides. And just like that, you have a solid piece. Let's do the other version. So again, this version right here, get you some pliers. And what you're gonna do is bend these and twist them in and around. So that way it holds onto the cage. So you're gonna just gonna twist them in and bend them in and twist them all the way around so you can hold on to the cage. And you're gonna do that to all four of them. Again, go inside, make sure you close them tight. See how that looks? So that's what you want on all four corners. Now, can you keep twisting and looping all? Well, yeah, you can. It's not necessary, but you can. Okay, and then you have four solid sides. Now we're gonna put the top onto the cage. Um, again, my version um, and the other version. So four by three, smoothed out on all sides for my version. For the other version, four by three, um, leaving two ends. So that way you can crimp it onto the cage. All right, let's get these clips. Again, you see why I love these clips. Quicker, more durable, last longer. Just an extra tool you have to get though. That's the only difference. Same thing. I'm going to stick it in this first set and that last set on the side. So again, stick your clip in and just crimp. And just crimp. Let's do another one. I have my lid. Perfect. Let's do the other one. So with this, line it up. So what you want to do is bend and fold. So you want to bend the two ends down and fold them around the, uh, the cage so they stay in place and that's your lid. And make sure they crimp on tight. Okay. And there you have your lid. Close, open, open, close, open, close. Make sure when you crimp the lid, you actually go all the way around because you don't want the lid to fall off. So when you crimp this, it's not just bend and fold. All Bend, fold, and wrap it all the way around your cage so that way it stays in place and doesn't fall off again this is a lot of wear and tear it's not as strong and over time you're gonna have to replace these a lot often that's the only downsides about doing it like this whereas this that lasts forever they ain't going nowhere no wear and tear all right so that is the brownie cage we did our twinkie cage 
This is our brownie cage. Let's go ahead and do our granola cage. Okay, so next we're gonna do the granola cage and this you want it four by eight. So four by eight. What I wanna do is I'm gonna cut the corners again. Um, this time I'm only gonna cut over one. Okay, so this little square right here, just that one square out. So I'm gonna cut it there and I'm gonna cut it there. Leave me that right there. And I'm gonna do that to all four corners. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna trim all the sides and the edges and I'll make sure that there's no excess. All trimmed down. Another reason why I love these is that the bait stays in there a lot better compared to if it was the hole is a little bit bigger so sometimes the bait tends to fall out or the crab can grab the bait very easily and just run away um, these makes the crabs stay there and work at it and work at it without running away so they really have to stick their claw in there so they take their time doing it let's go ahead and do the same thing here this one i'm gonna leave the size to crimp the cage right so this one i'm gonna leave it long So it'll be size one, two, three, and four down here. I'm gonna trim everything else. And when you're done, this is what it looks like here. So you have your ends left alone so be crimped but everywhere else is trimmed off so it'll get as smooth as possible all right so those are the two let's go ahead and fold them so now that we have our granola cut out we're going to head and fold them now these may be a little bit harder to fold than the other ones okay so if you're having a hard time folding this with your hands like it won't bend for you like the way you want it to you can start off with some pliers. Um, go down to the bottom edge of where you want to bend it and just bend it a little bit and go back to the other side and do the same thing towards the bottom where you want to bend it and bend it just a little bit. And you're gonna bend one tier and then that will help you get started and then you can finish the rest. Um, these granolas um, tend to be a little bit harder uh, to bend at times because they're so much smaller. Um, and then you're gonna do the same thing to the other side Here's where I came to find out where it helps me out at is by doing that and it helps me out to get it started. I can go ahead and use both sides to help me bend for the rest of the way. Now with this, what's going to happen is you're going to end up getting like an oval. Okay, see how it's like, it's not, it's supposed to be straight, but you get a little bit of an oval. So that's where you have to go in with your pliers and try to straighten it out. Okay? So you just bend it and bend it down to make sure that it's straight. So these granola, they're a little bit harder to make than the other cage on because they require a little bit, an additional step to straighten out the bottom because you don't want the bottom to be an oval. You want the bottom to be straight. That's one way. So let's go ahead and fold these up to where we can get it into the shape that we're looking for. And all I'm gonna do is using the plies to help me bend the side. And then the bottom, you know, I try to straighten it out as best as I can. And bend it up. And where it's humped at, I push it down. But along here where there's a hump, all I do is go in and I push that hump down. So the granola cage takes an extra step because you got to bend that hump down in order to get your bottom as straight as possible. Okay, see how I got it really straight on one side? Now I got to do the other side the same way. So that way there's no hump and the bottom of it is completely straight. So you have to go through each wire and bend them back down, bend that hump down so that way you can straighten out. See, straighten out and no longer hump. And then go back here and then of course bend your side a little bit more to get it where it's supposed to. And you may have to tweak with your pliers here and there to get a straight edge all the way around. Right. 
and then you fold on the sides. Now I just push it up and the sides are pretty simple. And again, see how it curves a little bit? Okay, everything should be straight. So therefore, I'm going to go in and try to straighten everything out with my pliers. And now you're pretty much just playing around with it, making sure that they're all straight edges. Anywhere it tends to curve a little bit, you want to bend it down um, to make sure that you have it in a perfect rectangular shape with no curves. So that's the granola cache. Now, you know, these are a little bit harder to make um, than the other ones, but I like these because you can cast it out a little bit further than the other size. Um, this goes a lot further, um, but it holds less bait. Okay, those hold a lot more bait. Um, but, you know, everybody has their own thing. So, again, wherever there's a lump, bend it down. Okay, and try to straighten it out. Boom. My version. Let's do the other one. Now, with this one, you see I leave the ends. Again, that's what you're going to use to crimp. My version, we're going to use a clip. Um, but with this, we're going to use this. So, same thing. You're going to fold them just like the other one. Now, there are machines out there that help you bend these a lot easier. Um, again, it's an extra tool. You just have to find the right machine that will bend what you want and what you need, and it's an extra tool. So when you get all that going on, boom, you get a more flat surface rather than an oval surface. Right? And then you're going to um, bend your sides and pull them up. Just like that. Okay, same thing with the other side. And then if it's not straight, make sure you use suppliers to straighten them out. So now you have that. Now you have your end. So you know what your ends is for. That right there. That's our cage folded. Let's go ahead and uh, crimp it together and get into one solid piece. So we're going to do mine first. Take clip. Center it, okay, curved side on the one head, okay, straight side on the double head. Um, and this, same thing, stick it in. And boom, there you go. Let's do three more. And boom, there you go. All four sides held together. Perfect. Now, sometimes, once in a while, the clips, they may not align or go where you uh, directly align like this one. You see, it's a little bit off. See? It's a little bit off. It's not exactly aligned. So, all I'm going to do is press it together, and boom, they're aligned. And if they're too loose, I can always use my pliers and crimp them in a little bit more to tighten them up a little bit. So like this one right here, you see how it's a little bit space out there? What I'm gonna do is use my pliers to go ahead and tighten that up a little bit. And that will do just fine. So sometimes it requires a little bit fixing. So that's all that is. Um, and then once you do that, you're good. Oh, okay, let's do the other one. So with this, same thing. All you're gonna do is bend this and wrap it around all the way around, okay? so that way you can hold on to your cage.
just like that. All right, and you have all four sides. Boom. There you go. That's your granola cage. Okay, so now we're gonna do the lid for the granola cage. So the lid is two by six. Okay? So two by one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, two by six. Um, now for mine, we're gonna do my first, my version. I'm gonna trim all the sides as uh, best as I can to where there's no excess piece coming out. Now for the other version, again, I'm gonna leave two at the end so I can crimp it, but everything else I'm gonna cut down. And I have the two piece, my version and the other version. Let's go ahead and put the list together. So for my version, I'm gonna go ahead and get my A clips. Again, put them together. Put the clip in. And crimp. Got one. Let's do the other side. And boom, you got two. There you go, you lit. So here, with this, you line them up, and you have your two ends. All you're going to do is bend, fold, and crimp it in. And remember, it's not just about bending and folding. You have to twist this all the way around. So that way your lid can stay on your cage. Right. And then you have your lid. Boom. There you go. Here's the difference between the um, this can cast out a lot further. They're skinny, they're aerodynamic, um, they can cast out further, downsize, you can't put much bait in there. These Twinkies, you know, they don't go as far as uh, granolas but you could put a whole lot more bait in there. Um, the brownies, they're about halfway. You can't cast them out further than this. Um, they're a little bit, you can cast out a little bit further than this. Um, and this hold as much bait as well. Um, these three styles of cages, those are my favorite. Um, again, I have the leaning tower, the round one. All right, so this is how you make your cage. Um, this video is long versions, okay? So for every episode, there will be two videos. Um, a long version, which goes into details, and a summary version, which goes straight to the point. Um, in my summary version, it's just gonna go straight to the point. This is what I do, this is how you knock it out. These long versions, it's more interactive. It's me explaining why I do, what I do, um, my trials and errors. Like I said, when I started a new uh, hobby about a year and a half ago, um, I spent roughly about two grand. Well, not two grand on just this stuff, like on aerators, poles, reels, lines, dollies, um, a bunch of other stuff too. Um, but I spent two years, a lot of time and a lot of money. Um, I don't want you to waste your money trying things that we know, that I know doesn't work. You can go try it yourself if you want. Um, but uh, every video, there's going to be a long version where we talk a little bit more about details, why I do what I do. Um, and then I'm going to throw out a quick summary one so that way you know you don't have to watch the long version every time you want to go back and see something. You just go to the summary version and boom, skip 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 through now down the line after roughly about september so forth when i push out the second set of seven videos the first set is eight videos when i push out the second set of seven videos they're all going to be summary versions on how i make every single snare style okay so that way if you want to see how i make a uh, granola cage a butterfly or how i make a brownie cage butterfly or how i make a twinkie cage butterfly Every one of those will have its own video, so that way you can go back to those videos and duplicate those. Um, I'm also going to do, well, again, I have the butterfly version, um, I have the dragonfly version, I have the wasp, um, I have the stingray, uh, I have the leaning tower. 
So there's a bunch of uh, versions and then I have my hybrids as well. So I'm going to do a video for each one of those. So that way, if you're interested, hey, you know what? I like your brownie cage and I like your um, dragonfly version. You can go to that video and it'll show you a summary how to do that from beginning to end. So that way you can duplicate it without having to take a look at the long version of it. Um, again, the long version is for me to explain trials and errors and um, what I did right, what I did wrong and what worked and what didn't work. You know, uh, with these over time, when it comes to the cages, nothing lasts forever, you guys. I need you to understand that cages, crabs will tear it up, okay? No snares last forever. It's going to rust. Um, you're going to lose it. Um, you're going to have to replace the line. The line is going to go bad. My snares are a little bit heavier, um, work a lot better, and they do last a lot longer because of the materials that I use. So, again, this is the cage. I hope you like the cage, how to make the cage. So if you like the video, please, again, subscribe to my channel. Um, click the like button, share this video, leave a comment. I love to hear from you. I love to what you think. I love to hear about your experiences and what you've done, and maybe you have a better version or a better way of doing it. Please share with me. I love to hear all those things, okay? In the next video that's going to come out next, we're going to focus on how to melt the lead weight onto these caves. Okay? Now, if you take a look at the store-bought uh, version like Walmart, Dick's, and things like that, they don't come with weight. They just come with a cage and loops, okay? Horrible loops, that's that. Loops, but there's no weight. So you have to attach a sinker uh, or some kind of um, heavy weight to it in order for you to um, throw it out there and let it stay on the ground. But us... We actually melt the lead onto the cage to make it heavy so it can stay at the bottom, uh, which you're going to see in the next episode. So catch the next episode. I hope you learned something from this episode. And until next time, peace out. Going, gets tough, I gets to gets going.